He laughed. He said, Mr. <laughs> he said, Mr. President, you are well informed. You are very intelligent. He said, no, because now, since uh, the advent of the 80s, these granite pyramids have disappeared. So if you send me a young man, you are sending me somebody, a graduate from the university who has no practical knowledge, I'm not going to accept it. He said, you will be happy. He said, okay, but I would need the name. So then he gave me your name. So I asked one Nigerian friend of mine who was with me in the military, a general, do people normally call Baba in Nigeria? Are they good farmers? He said, if his house, say yes. He <laughs> <laughs> said, okay. He said, why are you asking me this question? I said, no. I didn't want to tell him because this guy hasn't come yet. He said, no. I, you know, I, I know of chief and others, and then, but Baba is not a very common name. He said, well, normally they are good farmers. I said, okay. But he said, I, knowing you, they said, this is why you're asking me. I said, yes. I wanted, uh, then I used General Abu Bakr's name. I said, you, you know, uh, the former head of state, Abu Bakr, wanted to send me somebody who would help me start cultivating yam in the Gambia. And he called somebody, he told me somebody called Baba. He said, well, that must be a good farmer. I said, okay, thank you. Is that all I told him? Yes, that's all I wanted to know. So, when he came, the first thing I was interested to know is, is he a young man? I remember the then minister asking, uh, why would the FAO rep send us a very young man? Uh, I said, he said, no, 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 no. This is not a young man. I think he's older than you. I said, oh, okay. Then why would he send us an old man? <laughs> then the minister was confused. He said, hmm, he looks very experienced, highly experienced. I said, okay. Later on, uh, when he came in and started working, uh, then when I appointed Kambi, first it was MSK, I think, and uh, we had this problem of seeds. And I told Kambi, uh, the MSK, then he was the uh, Deputy Minister of Agriculture, and I told him, look, we really need to work with the FAO to really overhaul our system of projects here because they are not working. Unfortunately, we have followed the same footsteps of the former government in this project, Jali Pachat. Once the funding is finished, the project is dead. And I told him, this is not going to continue. Because we've spent so much money in agriculture, and as soon as the funding is finished, that's the end of the project. So we have to really work with the, this represent, uh, uh, FAO resident rep to come up with a program that, you know, to not only be sustainable, but make agriculture attractive to the young people. Because my objective is to make it attractive to the young people, so that they will not see uh, uh, agriculture as something of a social failure, or like an educated person living high school and running a farm, they think that you are failed. So let us come up with, uh, uh, we have to really go back to the drawing board and come up with this uh, program. That's how we came with the Gambia Food self sufficiency uh, Project with the Taiwanese. But they wanted to adopt it as issues. I said no. Involve the FAO. There's nothing we can do here without the involvement of the FAO resident rep because he's very sincere. Now, when I, you know, the late Kami was a comedian as well. And uh, when he took over, we were talking about uh, seats again, and he told me, <laughs> Mr. President, you know, I'll be honest with you. And I said, you know, he calls me Mbadi because Kiang and Fun. If Baba Ghana was a Gambian, I would have told a representative. Because if all the rep uh, FAO rep resident reps behave the way he's doing, I think, uh, I think we would have solved a lot of problems. And then he said, but you know, there was a, a, another program. I think we, I called him to the office when they, we made the presentation. And I said, okay, FAO should be able to give us uh, a technical uh, uh, backup for us to come up with a, a comprehensive agriculture project. 
Two days after he came to my office, he said, you know, I'm sick. And I said, yes, what's the problem? He said, hmm, this FAO rep, he's giving us sleepless nights. And uh, I want to go and leave, but I told him, well, if you are sick, you can go and leave. But whoever are going to work with him, give me their names and you tell them that I'll be watching. Because he cannot be more active than your personnel. Now, you're telling me that you're not working. He said, Mr. President, only you can catch up to Maybe he can catch up to you, but this man is going at the same speed that you are going. I said, but this is what he's expected. And he told me, he's not a young man. So he said, well, we will try. And then he said, you know the way to. He said, if I go to my people, before I go and leave, I'm going to set everything on fire. He's telling him, okay. Uh, Really, you have done what is unexpected, to be quite honest. But what I, I consider to be the most outstanding thing that you did, as far as I'm concerned, was the outbreak of this C CD, CP, CBPP. When he announced, he told me the bad news, my first reaction, what came to mind is that this is a disaster and we are going to lose all our cattle. Because I tell him there is no way, because this is something we have never prepared for. And knowing the bureaucracy of the international community and especially the FAO, I told him it will not, no, he said no, the FAO has already gathered some vaccine. I said what, are you sure? He said yes. He's already mobilized and we are going to be safe. And I said, thank God, let that. And then the moment I, uh, the vaccines came, I couldn't even believe that within that short period of time, uh, he would have been able to gather all this. Because <clears throat> we have practical experience with uh, previous uh, uh, FAO <coughs> resident reps. They have been very active, but most of the time when you tell them a program that is outside of the current program, they tell you, well, you have to consult. Them. And most of the time, they say, hmm, it is going to be very difficult. So in the first place, you are discouraged. Because he tells you, it is going to be very, very difficult to have this program accepted. But I remember uh, what reminds me of, uh, what will remind me of you is uh, one thing. Vice has a specific reaction to a crisis. Uh, I remember when we were talking about the food crisis, and I, I was telling her, you think this West would, uh, would uh, when she was prevail, uh, prevailing upon me to accept or declare a disaster, and uh, an emergency, is it emergency? Yes. And uh, okay, you know what? Let us work with our friends and get what we want to do. It, because if somebody is telling you that the only thing you can do is uh, declare a disaster and then they'll be laughing at us. Let us believe in God and then go to friends that we know would help. Then she came and said, well, uh, the, the, a week after she came back and said, well, oh, uh, that, that's a positive response. I think we have to uh, declare as requested because uh, FAO is at the forefront. I said, FAO? I said, yes. I said, okay. We have to, uh, that was the time I agreed to dec uh, for, it, for us to declare a national uh, disaster. And then the response, each time you have a meeting, FAO comes in, oh, Baba Ghana, uh, Baba Ghana, Baba Ghana, Dr. Baba Ghana, you know. You have become such a household name, even at the level of the cabinet. Now, I remember uh, Solomon, uh, uh, another minister of agriculture, there was something we were talking about. And then he said, you told me, let's talk to the FAO. I said, FAO? I said, yes. Then uh, two, two days later, he came back and said that I spoke to the rep, and he said it's possible. And I said, what type of man do we have here? Uh, and my fear, my fears then started developing that very soon they will take you out of this place. <laughs> you know, I know when, uh, I think I told you too, that you see, when people work very hard, don't press them on TV. These international appointees, because the moment you start placing them, they, take, they will take them out to another place. Uh, 